His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa yesterday hosted a dinner banquet at Rauda Palace, attended by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, in honor of the world champion, the representative of His Majesty the King for humanitarian work and youth affairs, and captain of the Royal Endurance Team, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The banquet was held to celebrate His Highness Sheikh Nasser's victory in the World Endurance Championship in France. The banquet was attended by their Highnesses, sons, senior members of the royal family, and a number of invited guests. His Majesty extended his best wishes to His Highness Sheikh Nasser, expressing hope for his continued success in his dedicated efforts to serve the Kingdom. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the UK Ambassador to Bahrain Alastair Long at Gdaybiya Palace. His Royal Highness emphasized the long-standing relations between Bahrain and the UK, founded on a historic partnership and collaboration across multiple sectors. He noted the Kingdom's commitment to further enhancing strategic bilateral relations to fulfill mutual aspirations. His Royal Highness stressed the importance of advancing Bahrain-UK multi-sector collaboration through mutual visits and joint agreements. During the meeting, discussions focused on strengthening Bahrain-UK cooperation, addressing issues of common interest, and reviewing regional and global developments. The Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Educational Charitable Trust and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Tamkeen, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Ambassador of Ukraine to Bahrain, Dmitry Senek at Skhir Palace. Bahrain-Ukraine relations were discussed and the importance of enhancing economic cooperation was emphasized. A range of issues of common interest and the latest regional and international developments were also reviewed. The Ambassador expressed his gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness. Noting His Royal Highness's commitment to furthering bilateral cooperation, he extended his best wishes for the Kingdom's continued progress and prosperity. The President of the Court of Crown Prince Sheikh Salman bin Ahmed bin Salman Al Khalifa attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and Chairman of the Economic Development Board, the EDB, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, issued Edict 2 of 2024 on restructuring the EDB as follows. The EDB is restructured under the chairmanship of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister with the following members His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, the Minister of Labor, the CEO of the EDB, the Minister of Industry and Commerce, the Governor of the Central Bank of Bahrain, the Chairman of Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the Political and Economic Affairs Advisor at the Crown Prince's Court, the CEO of Bahrain Mumtalakat Holding Company, Samar Majid Al Jishi, Yusuf Abdullah Ali Rada, Tariq Jalil Al Safar, Khalid Amro Rumehi, Khalid Ali Rashid Al Amin, Najla Muhammad Al Shirawi, Rasha Muhammad Sabkar, Ali Musa Shafi, Nabil Khalid Kano, Hala Ali Yatim, Hala Farooq Al Mayyad, and Ala Abdul Khalaq Said. The membership term is set for three years starting from the date of issuance of this edict. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, inaugurated the campus of the University of Strathclyde, Bahrain, at Harvard Heights, at Bahrain Financial Harbour, marking the first expansion of the prestigious university outside of Scotland, UK. The inauguration was attended by officials and business figures in addition to the executive management from the university, affiliates from the Bahrain branch, and the first batch of students for the new academic year. His Highness emphasized that the opening of the university is a confirmation of the Kingdom's global educational status and the great successes it achieved in terms of education and attracting top international universities. He noted that this aligns with the directives and vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to make Bahrain a leading model in education with the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He added that it also reflects the government's efforts to further collaborate with various organizations worldwide. His Highness highlighted that the university will further enhance Bahrain's educational landscape by fostering innovation and optimizing the potential of the kingdom's youth. He affirmed that Bahrain is committed to harnessing the energies of the youth and empowering them across various development fields, ensuring they play a crucial role in driving sustainable growth and progress in the country. His Highness praised the efforts of the university's executive management and wished the university further success. The opening of the university marks a significant collaboration between the university and S11 Education, a leading investment firm focused on innovative educational projects. The campus is the first integrated branch of the university outside of the UK, representing a major step towards fulfilling the university's mission of smart investment in education and innovation.
The closing ceremony of the 14th edition of the His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa Award for Voluntary Work was held in the presence of His Highness the Southern Governor, the Minister of Labor, the Minister of Social Development, and a number of invitees. More in this report. The closing ceremony of the 14th edition of the His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa Award for Voluntary Work was held to honor the pioneers of volunteer work in the Arab world who serve their societies and countries. The award aims to promote volunteering as one of the main pillars of the progress of societies. The ceremony honored 12 prominent Arab figures for their significant contributions to voluntary work. On the occasion, the Under Secretary of the Cabinet Affairs Ministry and Honorary President of the Good Word Society, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa, affirmed that the award comes every year to translate the directives of His Majesty the King and the national efforts of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to promote volunteering. The award has become one of the most important Arab awards that consolidate the international position of the Kingdom of Bahrain as the first incubator for volunteers. For its pioneering role in community work, the ceremony also honored the Rashid al-Zayani Charitable Foundation with the His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa Award for its support of many initiatives and programs that target various segments in the Kingdom of Bahrain, as well as its efforts in the developmental and humanitarian field. The Supreme Council for the Environment, the SCE, and the UN Environment Program, UNEP, organized a technical workshop on extended producer responsibility to further promote sustainable waste management through shared responsibility for all partners and to spread the concept of circular economy in the region. The workshop was held in cooperation with the UNEP's Environmental Technology Center and was attended by experts in waste management in West Asian countries. During the workshop, the Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Mbarak bin Dana, noted that Bahrain adopted the national waste management strategy in accordance with the best international health, environmental and technical standards to further reduce waste and promote recycling. He emphasized that the principle of extended producer responsibility is one of the methodologies included in the national waste strategy in Bahrain, noting that the experiences of many countries have proven that this methodology is effective and that the world has become open to creating such a partnership between all parties stemming from the Rio de Janeiro principles adopted in 1992 and has become part of the national legislation. The UNAP Regional Director and Representative of the UNAP Program in West Asia, Sami Demasi, emphasized the importance of extended producer responsibility in promoting the circular economy by addressing end-of-life end of life management and encouraging producers to redesign products and packaging at early stages. The Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications, Mohammed Al Kabi, inaugurated the International Telecommunications Union's Digital Skills Forum, organized by the Telecommunications Regulatory Authority in the presence of a number of senior officials from various countries, in addition to representatives of 17 regulating authorities from around the world, which is scheduled to run until September 19th. More in this report. The Telecommunication Union's Digital Skills Forum is one of the most important global events in the telecommunications sector. This prestigious event aims to bridge digital skills gaps around the world featuring in-person and remote sessions in addition to panel discussions on developing skills for digital transformation. The forum brings together industry leaders, experts, policymakers, and training providers from around the world to participate in panel discussions covering topics including digital transformation, industry perspectives on skills gaps, bridging the digital divide, and national digital skills frameworks for policymakers. Also announced during the forum is the Capacity Development for Digital Transformation Initiative, which is a tripartite partnership between the International Telecommunication Union, the United Nations Development Programme, and the European Union, which aims to promote digital literacy and create a digitally competent society so that the world continues to equip individuals with the skills to succeed and thrive in the digital era. The Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Yasser Ahmedan, headed the Bahrain delegation participating in the World Utilities Congress 2024 and the 6th Arab Water Forum in Abu Dhabi under the patronage of the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Chairman of the Abu Dhabi Executive Council, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. Hamidan stressed Bahrain's keenness to participate in the World Utilities Congress and the Arab Water Forum, for which one opening session was allocated due to their importance as they constitute a gathering of specialists and stakeholders to exchange views, strengthen partnerships, and discuss solutions with experts and specialists worldwide to face the challenges of achieving sustainable development goals. 
The conference, which is an interactive platform that brings together ministers, CEOs, experts, and global leaders in the field of energy, discusses enhancing strategic efforts between different countries and future trends in utilities industry efforts to reduce carbon emissions, improve costs, increase efficiencies, and enhance business performance. The Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Yasser Ahmedan, discussed with the Minister of Energy and Infrastructure of the UAE, Sahil Mohammed Al Mazrui, various initiatives and projects that allow for enhancing joint cooperation to achieve sustainability in the energy sector. The two ministers discussed innovative technologies and solutions to address common challenges in the areas of sustainability and water security, and their important role in enhancing national and international efforts to achieve sustainable development goals. The meeting also addressed issues related to achieving the sustainability of water resources, stressing the need to achieve self-sufficiency through increasing innovation and investments in the sectors. The two ministers stressed the importance of joint international efforts to achieve water security and confront climate change, in addition to the importance of enhancing cooperation between the two brotherly countries on issues of common interest in the fields of facilities and water security. The Assistant Undersecretary for Public Health and Chairperson of the National Health Survey Committee at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Sami Ali Bahram, affirmed the Ministry's readiness and coordination with the Information and E-Government Authority, the IGA, and primary health care centers to begin the pilot phase of the National Health Survey, scheduled to launch in the last quarter of this year ahead of the full-scale National Survey. Dr. Bahram explained that the National Health Survey aims to continue gathering data on Bahrain's health status and further enhance the database to support health plans and policies that advance the health care system. She noted that the ministry conducted its first specialized training course for researchers participating in the survey to equip researchers with the necessary tools and techniques for accurate data collection and analysis. For her part, the Deputy Chief Executive for Statistics and Population Registry at the IGA, Dua Al Harban, emphasized the importance of the surveys conducted by the authority in collaboration with government entities. The 59th meeting of the GCC Technical Committee for Retirement and Social Insurance Agencies concluded its 51st regular meeting hosted by Bahrain, represented by the General Organization for Social Insurance in coordination with the GCC General Secretariat and with the participation of representatives of all insurance agencies in GCC countries. The meeting addressed the most prominent topics related to the development of the applicable retirement and insurance systems and procedures and following up on developments in the implementation of modern insurance systems and everything related to the unified system for extending insurance protection to GCC citizens working outside their countries. The third day of the meeting was allocated to hold an open meeting for GCC citizens working in Bahrain in the presence of representatives of all insurance agencies in GCC countries and a large number of Gulf nationals working in Bahrain in addition to human resources managers from the entities subject to the system to discuss the application of extending protection in GCC countries and respond to all inquiries they have. The Ministry of Industry and Commerce continues its efforts to ensure the implementation of Decision 14 of 2022 on banning the manufacture, import or circulation of single-use plastic bags with a thickness of less than 35 microns. The Ministry affirmed that it continues to carry out comprehensive inspection campaigns on shops and points of sale that handle plastic bags in the Kingdom, which demonstrated commitment to the decision. 551 samples were withdrawn from more than 500 shops and after testing, it was found that 83% of them exceeded 35 microns, while 17% of the samples were found to be in violation of the requ requirements and the necessary legal measures were taken in this regard. Some types of plastic bags are excluded from this decision, namely single-use plastic bags with a thickness of more than 35 microns and bags used for medical purposes, in addition to bags manufactured for export outside the kingdom and garbage bags. The National Bureau for Revenue carried out 157 inspection visits to local markets and various governorates during August as part of its keenness to ensure compliance with all regulations and legislations to promote the proper application of value-added and selective taxation. 37 violations were detected, with in which included failure to comply with the conditions and procedures for issuing value-added invoices and displaying prices of goods or services that do not include VAT.
Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority, in cooperation with the Connect China Forum, organized a specialized workshop with the participation of 35 travel agents from China. The initiative aimed at enhancing tourism cooperation between the two countries and to showcase Bahrain's diverse tourist attractions. The workshop covered a range of topics, including targeted marketing strategies for Chinese markets via tourism offices and destination management companies. Chinese travel agents, agents also presented tailored tourism packages specifically designed for Chinese tourists wishing to visit Bahrain. The workshop highlighted the efforts undertaken by the authority to fortify Bahrain's position as a desirable tourist destination in the promising Chinese market, facilitated through effective collaboration with the Connect China Forum and the consolidation of the partnerships with various stakeholders within the travel and tourism sector. Bahrain Institute for Political Development began the intensive training program for new members of the Shura and Representatives Councils as part of the Institute's keenness to carry out its national responsibilities in providing support and assistance to the legislative authority. The program aims to provide comprehensive cognitive training for new members to perform the legislative and oversight tasks of the sixth legislative term. The first day included three sessions, included political practices and the government program, general budget, national financial plans, and effective communication skills. The program includes a number of other topics such as the constitutional and legal system of parliamentary work, the internal regulations of the Shura and Representatives Councils, and parliamentary protocol skills. Bahrain Institute for Political Development concluded a workshop on technology and innovation in improving parliamentary work as part of the parliamentary support program offered by the Institute to employees of the Shura and Representatives Councils and related entities. The workshop included a number of key topics, namely digital transformation and the importance of technological innovation in parliamentary circles, the role of technology used in improving and developing parliamentary work, and the technical protection of parliamentary data and information, in addition to discussions on the mechanisms of